Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Many gamers dream of playing games at 60 FPS in 4K, but only very few are able to achieve that dream as even high-end PCs struggle to provide 60 frames per second at such a high resolution. A feature which should increase your frame rate while not degrading image quality is Nvidia's DLSS or Deep Learning Super Sampling, which is supported by RTX graphic cards. Some were quick to dismiss DLSS as yet another upscaling algorithm, but it's not that simple. Nvidia uses supercomputers and machine learning to teach their AI what a perfect 4K image of a specific game looks like. When you then enable DLSS inside the graphic options of games which support that feature, then this will cause the game engine to render frames at a lower resolution, which increases the frame rate. DLSS then takes the lower resolution image rendered by the game engine and uses its knowledge about what the game looks like in 4K to calculate an anti-aliased 4K image. So you then get more frames per second while not losing image quality. You can also expect DLSS performance and image quality to improve over time, as Nvidia continues to have its supercomputers train the AI what a perfect image of supported games looks like. And these improvements then find their way to your PC through driver updates. So even though I got many requests to test DLSS right after the first games added support for that feature, I decided to wait and give DLSS some time to mature before taking a closer look. But quite some time has passed, so we will finally do that today. To test DLSS I chose Anthem and Metro Exodus. So in Anthem I would always go to this spot here and then use a script to rotate the perspective of my player. While doing so MSI Afterburner and RTSS measured the frame rate with and without DLSS. And in Metro Exodus I then did the same thing here. Which brings us to the results of my tests. With a demo unit of an RTX 2080 Ti, which Nvidia provided for this test, at 4K and low graphics settings, I measured an average frame rate of 74 FPS in Anthem. When I enabled DLSS, then this increased the average frame rate by 9 frames, or 12%. In Metro, I then tried to choose graphic settings, which would also give me around 70 FPS without DLSS, so that we can compare how well DLSS works in each of these games. So at 4K and with ultra settings, I measured an average of 69 FPS without DLSS, and with DLSS enabled, I measured 85 FPS, that's a 23% increase. Now, DLSS needs a bit time to process the image after the game engine rendered it. This is why when you already achieve more than 60 FPS without DLSS, then you will see a smaller FPS increase than when you get less than 50 FPS without DLSS. That explains why when I increase the graphic settings to Ultra in Anthem, then I measure the frame rate increase of 27%. And in Metro Exodus, I measured an average frame rate increase of 45%. 68 instead of 47 FPS. That has a dramatic impact on how fluid the game feels and shows how different game engines respond to DLSS as well as what can be achieved by optimizing DLSS for specific games. Now that's with the RTX 2080 Ti, which is meant for 4K gaming. But what happens when you use a graphics card which isn't quite as powerful, like the RTX 2080? Again, in my tests without DLSS, I tried to find graphic settings where I would get about the same 50 FPS as in my other tests, so that we can compare the results. With Anthem using the high graphics preset, I then measured an average of 53 FPS without DLSS and 63 FPS with DLSS enabled. That's an increase of 10 FPS or 19%, so less than what I got with the 2080 Ti. In Metro, 53 FPS at average with DLSS disabled was the closest that I could get to the 47 FPS that I got with the 2080 Ti. So since DLSS provides a bigger FPS boost at lower frame rates, you have to keep that in mind when you look at the results from this test. But I think that it still shows that with an RTX 2080, the FPS boost provided by DLSS is smaller than with the RTX 2080 Ti. Then I also tried DLSS with an RTX 2060. With that card I barely measured an improvement in Anthem, while in Metro I couldn't even enable DLSS. Sadly I do not have an RTX 2070 here, but based on these results I think that it is clear that the FPS boost which you get from DLSS depends on the performance of the graphics card, where you better don't expect too much of an FPS increase from an RTX 2060. 
Another factor which affects the DLSS performance is resolution. Nvidia teaches their AI what a game looks like in 4K. So when you play at 1440p, 1080p or at an ultra wide resolution, then DLSS will provide a smaller FPS boost than at 4K. That said, Andrew Edelston, the technical director of deep learning at Nvidia, said that they are listening to the feedback of the community and DLSS performance at lower resolutions is a top priority. Another thing that gamers must consider is that DLSS will only increase your frame rate in supported games when the graphics card is the bottleneck. If your CPU is the bottleneck and so the GPU load is at 85% or less, then DLSS will not increase your frame rate as reducing the load on your graphics card does not help when your CPU is the bottleneck. So you might want to use MSI Afterburner to check the GPU load of your graphics card in real time. To be honest, before I tested DLSS I did not expect much of that feature. But depending on the game and which RTX graphics card you own, it can result in a noticeable FPS boost. So I would like to encourage you to try that feature if you play games which support DLSS. Even a small FPS boost is still a nice improvement considering that you just have to enable one option to increase your frame rate. Because of how DLSS works, you can expect that its performance as well as image quality will increase over time with new driver updates. So that's another nice aspect of that feature. Depending on the game, DLSS does have a certain look or style, which is easy to notice in Anthem. But that didn't bother me or distract me while I was playing the game. And in Metro Exodus, I honestly didn't notice a difference in terms of what the game looks like, while DLSS increased the frame rate by 45% in my test case. So after I spent more than 20 hours testing DLSS, I must say that I hope that more games will add support for this feature, as it is something that many gamers can benefit from. And that's all for today. If you enjoy the content that I release on my channel, then it would be great if you could support me on Patreon. Without the awesome support that I get from my patrons, battle nonsense would not exist anymore. You can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you will also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.